This presentation, as I said, is an introduction to system model, and as part of it, I will, will give like a small uh, presentation of what's coming in the other one, so you can easy, have easier to use, choose which ones to attend later this conference. I myself, I'm John Rugard, and I'm the CEO of Wolfram MathCore. We are responsible of developing System Modeler. We are based in uh, Linköping, Sweden, which is a town similar to Champaign. The same size, is a student city also. Uh, and we have been there since, uh, since we first began uh, developing what was then called MathModelica, but now Wolfram System Modeler. So first of all, uh, a little bit uh, uh, or presenting what system model is used, what, which kind of systems we, we are modeling. It's obvious from the, from the name of it, of course, that we are modeling different systems. But what do we mean by system? And what do we mean by modeling? Modeling could be taking something like taking clay and doing modeling clay. It can be t drawing something. It can be putting up uh, equations and uh, trying to do something that way. In this case, we talk about uh, creating system of equations by using drag and drop components graphically. And these systems can be all sorts of systems. They can be uh, things like uh, a robot, as, that, as we're seeing here in the middle, or a Lego Segway, or they could be the human body. So it can be different types of systems. Um, what unites them in the sense for system order as this that we're looking at the dynamics of the system. What is happening over time? So how do we control a Lego Segway so it doesn't fall when we're driving it? What happens if I take a drug uh, with my body? When I eat, what happens with my metabolism? When I'm, I'm driving my car, how does it accelerate or how does it decelerate and so on? So we're trying to answer that, those kind of questions. What's happening over time? And whether it's a financial system or it's a mechanical system or a biological system, it really doesn't matter too much because the underlying maths are the same. So just as Mathematica is a very generic tool, system model is also a very generic tool. And just as Mathematica sometimes has the problem people believing it's only for mathematics, many people believe, and which kind of illustrates by this picture also, that system model is only for engineering. But it has a larger scope than just engineers. So traditionally, um, there have been, many, um, have been different sy simulation softwares. Uh, let me just go back to zoom in a little bit again. Different system, systems developed for, for modeling of, of these type of systems. And they have had two different properties. Either they have been very good for modeling of a specific domain. For instance, being very good for electrical simulation as, as spies or being very good for mechanical sim simulation as atoms, or being targeted only to biological um, um, applications like cell designer, and so on. Or they have been very general, like if you use Fortran code or Simulink. The good thing with the specific tools is that they are easy to compose your electrical uh, model in or your mechanical model, and so on. The good thing with the other generic tools, of, of course, is that you can model a more generic set of, of, of functions. And most systems in the world are more generic than just having a mechanical part or just having an electrical part. The classical example being a car, where you have the mechanical part, the electrical part, the hydraulical part, the thermal part, and so on and so forth. And all of that has to work together at all time. So then you end up in these kind of block-based or, or coding-based programming to build up those models. But of course, you make, want to make it just as easy to model the whole complex system as it's to, to model the different uh, specific domains with the domain-specific tools. And that is what we're trying to do with System Modeler. Likewise, many there are two different uh, sets where, where tools that are very good at continuous systems and others are very good at discontinuous systems. But the same goes here. Most systems have a blend of this, have a mix of this. So you have to be able to treat both continuous and, and discrete systems in the same tool. At the end, everything comes down to, to model everything uh, so it, it mirrors nature as, as close as possible. So the way nature works is the way the modeling and simulation tool 
should make it work also. So if we take a domain-specific example, uh, and this is an electrical circuit. Even if you're not an electrical engineer, you might have seen this kind of picture before. The resistors will look a little bit different if you're from the US, which most of you are. But in principle, you, you, you might have seen this, and you get an idea of what, what it is. You have a, a voltage source, a couple of resistors, a capacitor, an inductor, and you, you connect that to an electrical circuit. Now, in system modeler, if you would uh, connect this, you would end up with something looking like this. So it's very similar to the circuit we draw by hand or that we read about in the, in the book. If you would do this in a Fortran code or C code or in, in a block-based oriented approach like Simulink, the first thing you'll need to do is to find which equations belongs to each and every component in the system. Once you've done that, you have to decide what is my input, what is my output, and you will have to set up the outputs as functions as inputs. Once you've done that, you can connect your system, and the system would look something like this in a block-based approach. Now, this, of course, took you a longer time. So if you're working in system modeler, you might have time to take a nap, or perhaps even better, or combine it with inventing new stuff, coming up with new ideas, doing more analysis on your results. But the big gain doesn't come in the first implementation here. The big advantage comes once you want to develop it further. So suppose I want to add something to, to this electrical circuit. I want to add a capacitor from here to there, or a, a, a voltage source, or whatever. It's easy to see where to connect it on the system order approach. In the, in the code that you would write in, in C or in a block-based version here, it's not as easy. It requires more thinking before you can do it. In fact, in many times, it's even impossible, actually to do it because of this interaction of being able to communicate things back and forth at any given point in time. Because in reality, things are not defined as input and output. If you look at the, that door, when you all came in here, it was an entrance. Now it's an exit, right? And that is how the wor world works. Things are not defined as inputs and outputs. It depends on the situation. So if you have to model something and saying, this is my input and this is my output, meaning you make it an algorithm, then later on when you want to reuse it, you have said, that's an, that's an input. So we cannot exit from there. We have to build another door to exit. And that doesn't really uh, go very long. So you have to build a lot of different models and combine those and have some logic telling you which part of the model to use in which uh, part of your, your modeling work. So that's the kind of things we try to deal with in System Modeler. And, and to do that, there are, are several key features, like the drag and drop modeling, where you, you build things from, from ready-made components. There's the hierarchical modeling, where you build up things uh, by parts. You, you build a DC motor and make that a component. You can use that DC motor within some other, um, other larger model, like when, when modeling uh, the Lego Segway, for instance, to drive the wheels from it and so on, and you build up a system of hierarchies where you can have experts uh, developing one part of the model and some other experts another part of the model. But rather than talking too much about that, I will start the software. Because you have noticed uh, until now I, I'm, I'm running Mathematica for the presentation, but let's start system modeler here. And it's clear, recently used. So this is basically how System Modeler looks like when you start. It has an empty canvas. It's kind of the same thing like the empty notebook in Mathematica. But rather than being some place where you can type, it's a place to drag and drop things together. So let's make a, a pendulum uh, or double pendulum as, your, as our first example. What you do is you either use the available canvas or you create a new, new canvas a new model, let's call that double pendulum then. Ooh. Something went wrong there, okay, there. Like that. And now I have to find the components for a double pendulum. So we have these set of libraries, Modelica libraries here, included uh, in the distribution where you can find mechanical components. 
And multibody here is 3D mechanical components. So if we want to make a 3D mechanical pendulum, I will have to search for components there. The first thing I'll need to add when it comes to 3D mechanical system in, when you're working system model is a world object. That is basically telling me information about my system, like what's the gravitation and things like that. Um, not, not something we have to bother too much about, but let's make the, a pendulum now. I go to parts here and I will find that I have something like, oh, I'll go to joints first perhaps, and I will find a revolute joint. So I, I take that revolute, revolute joint and then I'll take a body cylinder from the library here and what I do is just connect them like that. I can then set different parameters for, for, for my system like uh, for instance, uh, let me just uh, reach this by declaration order, I can set the length of this uh, bottle cylinder. So let's set it to, and it has three directions, so one meter in x direction and zero in the others, like that. And now I have set up my system. So behind the scenes, we have set up an, uh, uh, an equation of uh, a system of equations uh, that can now be simulated. So to do that, we will open something called Simulation Center, where I click Simulate, and I can now go in and find the different components I had. For instance, the Revolute joint. Expand into that and see there is a bunch of variables that I might look at. For instance, the angle. And I can plot the angle and see the dynamics of the system. Now, as this is a 3D mechanical system, looking at the, at the plot like this might be a little bit confusing. So then, of course, uh, we can look at a simple animation of it to see how our pendulum is working. So now, uh, next thing I want to do is to kind of make it a little bit more complicated. So what I do is uh, I copy these two guys here, like that, and I asked add to make it a double pendul pendulum because I told you it should be a double pendulum. So I do like this, go back here, and I rebuild this before re-simulating using the new facts, and we'll see it build up a double pendulum. Let's do this. And we can now see it working here. So let's zoom out a little bit like that. OK, so, so just like that, we have built up a double pendulum. As, and as you saw, we could get access to all variables and plot results if we would like to. Now, this is a very idealized pendulum because it doesn't have any friction uh, or any damping or any source. And there are very few systems in the world that, that exist that doesn't have any kind of friction. So next thing we might want to do is to add some friction to the model. So I can take these two revolute joints and say, uh, go here and add something called axis flange. So I set that to true. And if we look, when I set it to true at the two revolutes, we'll see, should I happen for both? Let's do it here. I don't know why that, that didn't happen. Okay. So we can see here it added two new connection points. And here I can add other logics, like for instance a damper. So let's, uh, let's find a damper. And, and in this case, we can use a, a 1D mechanical rotational damper. So I go to the components here, and I'll find spring damper, spring, and, and damper, and so on. And you can see there are many other components. So if I would uh, want to add clutches or gearboxes or whatever, things like that, I could do that. So let's connect this one here like that and give it some, some value to the damping, like one. I don't know if that's a good value or not. And I add damping to the other one here also. So now, uh, in order to be able to compare it more easily with the, with the previous one, I create a new experiment in parallel to the old one with this new system. It's, sim it's very similar, but it has this fri friction added to it. So if I do this and look at the animation for this one, when we look at it, it doesn't look very different, but it, we can see that 
it seems kind of a bit slower. It, it's similar, but it's, it's slower. But that's, of course, uh, easier to see exactly what's happening if I go in and plot the same variable here. If I go to revolute 1a and see that now suddenly, from the first system I had here, it's a quite big difference in the angle and the movement. And we can compare and learn from that. And that, in the essence, is that's the essence of what you would do in system order. You drag and drop things together and make simulations of them. Now, once you have your simulations, you might want to do something more. You, you, perhaps you're not just happy with looking at these curves and saying, oh, OK, this is the difference. Let's change this parameter. This is what happens. And that's where the combination with Mathematica comes. If you have both softwares, they will know how to communicate. And you can do a lot more uh, by connecting to Mathematica. So for instance, you might want to do model calibration. You have, have made some experiments and, and used that experiment values to calibrate your system or your parameters. Or you might do a fancy visualization of a satellite path or control design. You might want to have this look at the system equations. You can pull them into Mathematica. And you can not only look at them, you can do basically whatever you like with the equations. So let's look at very simple examples of what you might want to do. First thing is that you set up the link using something called WSM link. So I, I, I open that link, and now I can simulate, rather than within this uh, simulation center tool, I can simulate within Mathematica. I tell it which model I want to simulate, and I say where to save the simulation. In sim in this, oh, in sim in this case, sorry. I kind of, there you go. And once I've done that, I can see that it returns some information about my system. It says it has one system equation and one state variable and nothing else. And I can now use this within Mathematica to do things like getting plots and things like that. But more interesting, of course, is things like, let's just skip forward here and go to a more practical example, th something that might be interesting. This is a meta metabolic pathway. And what we want to do here is to look at the different parameters and see how sensitive a, a certain concentration here for this, oh, this guy here is to different variables in the system. And I should have, yet again, loaded the right library now and I restarted. There you go. Now it should be easier for it to find it. They have a good idea to get it breeze. Yes. So now it, it uses, instead of WSM simulate, uh, it uses WM simulate sensitivity. And I will not go, uh, talk about the details. But what we will do is we will create a table where we take all the parameters from the, from the, sim from the model and, dis and perturbate them with 50%. And we see how they affect the concentration of this particular, con particular substance. And now we can get a, get a bunch of plots here telling us how sensitive our system is to changes in the different parameters. So meaning we gain a knowledge about the system, and we can see, for instance, that this parameter doesn't affect the behavior at all, while this has a, a, a much larger impact, and so on. This means that we can now use this to either improve the model itself or go out and new, do new experiments on the real world to understand which type of behavior we actually have. Because for instance, if you look at this parameter, it shows that if we do a change, we might even get an undershoot rather than an overshoot uh, in the system. So if we can prove that by experiments, that this is what's happening, or that that is not happening, we can use that to prove if the, how, how good the model is. So that's just a, a one very small example of what you could do in, in system order with Mathematica. But I said the idea is that that you can take it into Mathematica and do kind of whatever you would like to within Mathematica with uh, the, either the equations or the results and so on. And as this is a Mathematica conference, most of you are pretty familiar with what you could do within Mathematica. So Lean Shipping is from Sweden, and we use uh, real cat characters. So Smurgosboot is spelled like that, and no other way. And, um, Later today, we will have a smorgasbord of applications. 
I showed you a 3D mechanical system, but it can be used for so many other types of systems. So one of the examples we will be giving is estimating liver function. So what we will show is today when you are, are testing liver function, uh, you, what you have to do is you have to, to take a sample from the liver, which is a, a rather invasive thing to do, or the kind of more modern approach is to go make an MRI scan with some contrast, get these images, and then you can do some image processing in Mathematica and, and use that together with the model to predict uh, who's, who, who the health condition of, of the patient. And that's, that is what we will go, going to show. And we will also show, uh, all, I will also mention how we're looking into the future to not, not use contrast, but rather 3D uh, plots like this. And I'm, I'm not really telling here what, what it will do, but we'll see at that if you attend the presentation. Another application area is from Peter, who's sitting there. Peter has a tradition to always come to the conference with toys. He has done a catapult, he has done a Lego Segway, I think, he has done, uh, he has done a quadricopter and so on, and t this year is Arduino. He's, our, uh, he's, he's the uh, product manager of system modeler, so we kind of see what kind of interest he has. And as the third application to show the, the kind of differences in applications you, you can do is financial and log logistical models to show return on, on investment of a system. And this is, uh, uh, this is a, of course, a very different model from, from the liver model. But using the same tool and kind of the, the methods of doing it is pretty similar. Then tomorrow, there will be a smorgasbord of libraries showing uh, one hydraulic library, one visualization library, and one for uh, developing electrical drives so for different systems. Um, and you will see that soon, that in, in the next presentations, that we'll come in with, with a, a, a store with a bunch of libraries to add on functionality to system order for different, different areas. So that is something you will be able to see there. To just summarize, uh, before, bef before summarizing, just show where is it used. Um, these are some selected users to show that, well, uh, we have been there now for one and a half year uh, since the re release, roughly. Um, and it's used worldwide for, for all sorts of organizations. Everything from a company or a, a university like UNISA, University of South Africa, Africa's largest uh, university, has a campus-wide uh, unlimited site license of System Modeler, but also companies like Apple are using System Modeler. So there's a lot of different talks that you can attend to get more, because this was really fast for you, really quick. You get some idea what System Modeler is doing. Directly after this will be what's coming next in System Model 4.0 when it comes to the connection to Mathematica. Then we will have modeling and simulation, what's coming next in the graphical user environment, what's the new key features to make it easier to model there. Then after that, we will follow with the applications that I just mentioned. And if that's not enough for you, then tomorrow there are the libraries that I mentioned, but also a uh, presentation here, system modeling and digital analysis of ecosystems. And then on Wednesday, it's a little bit sad, but there's only one presentation on system model on Wednesday, but you can still go, go on it. And that's on Little Chief by Tatjana Samardic. So you, every day you have different presentations. And then on Thursday, there is actually a, a workshop that you can attend. I think, I think there are still a few places. Is that correct? Yeah. So you can probably talk to the reception if you're interested to stay on Thursday uh, before noon and attend the session. So with that, I'll thank you very much and leave for questions.